Hello, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Uh, and good afternoon, good morning, good good evening from everywhere which part of the world you're in today. Um, welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Kieran Lewis. I'm a freelance graphic designer from South London, England. And today we have the lovely Rachel Roth. Rachel, how are you doing? Hi, doing well. How are you? I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm so excited to see what we're going to work on today. Um, yes. As always, we've too. got uh, we've got our lovely moderators as well, uh, keeping the chat nice and healthy and flowing. Um, and also just a few things to kind of run through today. Um, as usual, uh, we have our running daily creative challenge, which is exciting. Um, if you've missed the last Illustrator challenge, daily challenge, uh, you can catch the first week of replays every weekday at 11.30 Pacific time. Um, and obviously don't miss it tomorrow. Um, so yeah, definitely get on board, get on board with that. Um, and usual, we're gonna be answering all of the um, chats and the comments which come through today. Um, it's best to go on Behance if you can, uh, do it that way, behance.net slash Adobe Live. Um, and what I'll be doing is I'll reading that directly and then feeding that straight to Rachel um, so then she can get an idea of what everyone is, um, what everyone's saying. But um, that's enough on my part. Obviously, we're here today to talk about Rachel and her process. So, uh, so Rachel, what will we be working on today? Hello, hello. Um, yeah, so I was actually had the pleasure of doing an editorial design live a few years ago. So I thought I would kind of create a continuation of what I did that time. So I tend to create a lot of lists. I document a lot of random things and something I've been doing for the last few years is just writing something every day. And so I thought this could be a great opportunity to use some of that content and you know, create something. Today will be a typographic zine. Um, so kind of using some of the foundation that I established last time, but then also, you know, kind of recreating that and how to make it slightly different this time around. Um, nice. Nice. So I actually printed yeah. the last one. Um, so I have some copies uh, here. Yeah. Um, I figure I can run through the design here in a little bit but um yeah. no your work is um is awesome like I've seen a lot of um you know Behance like you play a lot of typography and and shapes and um I mean I, I work in that space as well so it's, it's quite cool to sort of see how you're going to sort of build and you know create this typographic design zine um and I can see as well through the chats mm -hmm. we've got a lot of people I wonder where everyone's from different different parts of the world because you're in New York right yes um, east yeah, coast New York. New York New York and obviously yeah and obviously I'm in London. And so you're like, over there in London, and, yes, across the yeah, sea. Yeah, it's like, it's like afternoon and then evening over here. So like, and um, yeah, I can see some names. We've got Stephanie, we've got Anthony Jackson. Uh, everyone's saying hello. This is all good, all fun. Um, and yeah, Steph. it's exciting. Look forward to seeing what everyone uh, says as we go a bit deeper into your project today. Um, right. Yeah, shall we uh, go into it? Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. So just to kind of get us started and, you know, on some sort of schedule, um, I find it helpful to kind of set the parameters when you first start a project. Oftentimes, um, you know, infinite possibilities can be a bit overwhelming. So for me, I like to kind of establish those limitations first that kind of, you know, mm. help me stay on track and, you know, keep me in a parameter um, kind of thing exactly so, yes yeah 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 um totally gold so, piece right <laughs> exactly um and yeah i had like one of my professors uh when i was at studying at school he really you know preached about that and for example one thing he did uh he like only used one typeface for an entire year so it's just like <laughs> you know wow. creating these boundaries and then i feel like it's almost mm. sometimes for me at least it's easier to find creativity when you are you know limited by mm. very specific things anyways Definitely. um okay so just yeah so that, the, just very quick i've got to know what's your favorite typeface i feel like i'm really curious to know have you got my favorite, favorite typeface Ugh, yeah that's extremely hard um that's a bold one isn't it <laughs> it's a very bold one and i feel like it changes yeah um i don't know i would say my most re I, I was on founders grotesque for a while i liked that one you know just nice I love uh, grotesque sans serif um yeah. has some nice personality yeah. but yeah i mean it it changes every year it it's differs. every year it's yeah. a different one yeah i wonder why everyone in the chat if, if, you know by all means obviously say what your uh, 
for a typeface to go through. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm a brand doing grotesque. Gonna go I was going to ask. Um, okay, yes. Yeah, it's a good one. It, it's it's like, a, you can't go wrong. I feel like it's just clean and just, it kind of, you know, capitals or lowercase, it works. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good looking one. We love a grotesque. Indeed. So <clears throat> let's go into it. Cool. So today's task, design a typographic zine, mm. just in case there was any confusion. Um, so yeah, so like I said, I've kind of started establishing some of these limitations to kind of guide what we do today. So some of those, um, so last time I broke down uh, all the content by season. So I did mm. spring, spring, summer, fall, winter. And mm. I had a different color for each season to kind of differentiate the four. But mm. I thought it would actually be quite interesting this time to just do entirely black and white with no color. Mm. So we're going to do that. Uh, nice. I'm going to keep it chronological. Mm. Um, this is, again, something that I plan on printing and doing a saddle stitch. So the page mm. count needs to be divisible by four. And then the other obstacle is to use all the content, which there's quite a lot. Um, I believe I was at 72 pages total by the end of last year. So nice. um, I think I wrote more last year than usual, probably because of... A lot happened, right? <laughs> a lot a lot happened and there was more time. So yeah, more words. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I like to start each project with mm. kind of collecting words and, you know, seeing what comes to mind when you just kind of like free flow, write words down. Um, and sometimes I think that can visually drive um, the end result. Mm. So for 2020, just some some words that might bring out some visuals or something we can play with while we're mm. creating. So 2020 was chaotic, but it was also still very transformative. Um, it was loud in some ways, very quiet in some ways confined, monotonous, and uh, a bit messy. So mm. just, uh, yeah, some words to kind of summarize uh, mm. how 2020 was. And then just a reminder, um, I found this on the internet and I thought this was a good way to look at this project. Mm. So, you know, this obviously is not for a client. This is just for fun. So. Mm. I figure this can really just be kind of an experiment and just playing with type mm. and, you know, and the creating, best ones, creating right? like something interesting. Just, uh, just experimenting and just, just playing around. I think that's the, the beauty of our line of work. It's you get obviously client briefs, but then you have those space where you can just have fun, be creative, right? And totally. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I can see in the chats as well, a lot of people are engaging. In fact, from all over the world, you've got Arizona, Argentina, Ukraine, um pittsburgh cool. texas boston yeah wow loads of places so you've That's got a lot of people from different parts of the world rachel looking into your creative hemisphere so it's a uh, exciting times um i can see people as well talking about the fonts as well uh voodoo val uh mentioning that she's digging your font uh right now uh oh, thank you. um and yeah it's exciting we've got some uh, lot of people interacting so um look forward to sort of seeing cool. the uh, work glad everyone tonight. can thank you for tuning in everybody That's it's very exciting yeah um okay so yeah i mean and it's almost it's kind of like going back to school you know not having a client and just really getting mm. to experiment and see what we come up with so here we go um okay so yeah as i mentioned um i'll just kind of click through the so last time i was here Mm. which was three years ago. Um, this was the zine that I made. So I had decided um, to create it with using a, a bit of a smaller size. So this is actually four by six, which is about the size of a postcard. And I mm. liked I liked this size because it felt, you know, a little more intimate than a big book. And, you know, a lot of this content, um, it's not really personal. It's It's more just you know, something I saw that day or maybe something that happened mm. in the news. Um, mm. David Sedaris has this giant journal of uh, writings of his from like 30 years. So it's a little bit inspired by that as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, right? mm. I'm sorry. 
I was gonna say, it just resonates well with you, I guess, this whole project. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that. And it's just also, you know, just like a daily exercise, something mm. something to do um, and keep up with, which is interesting. And then you can read back through it whenever you want or when you do projects like this. So I spent, yeah. um, I've spent quite a bit of time the last few days just combing through all the content, um, kind of organizing it and also just reviewing mm. it and kind of revisiting what happened last year um i think I it's something quite out. nice as well i was gonna say i bet there's something quite nice in just stopping and just reflecting right and just digesting exactly and it actually like i said there were 72 pages so it it takes <laughs> yeah. quite a bit of time to get through all that um, but yeah i mean i think we can all agree that it was a very mm. very eventful and also uneventful at the same time year um but anyway, so I'll just I'll just click through this real quick, um, so you can kind of see some of the guiding forces um, of how we want to. You know, like I said, I'm kind of borrowing some of what I established here for today because I think it could be cool eventually. It's like some kind of series, um, so you know, we want we want it to relate in some way, but also feel different. Yeah. So again, this was 2017. Um, and again, it was typographic zine, so no images, just using colors, shapes, and typography. Um, and like I said, I had, you know, looked at it different ways uh, mm -hmm. to measure a year, different calendars, mm -hmm. you know, using different techniques. So here it's just, mm -hmm. obviously, it's there's 365 days, there are 12 months, there are four seasons, and it's also one full revolution around the sun is a year. So that was kind of what this circle element represented. Mm. Um, and then again, just having having all the content in there, but using the content more as texture since, you know, maybe I don't want people to read every single thing. So it's more just mm. kind of this like layering element and then pulling out different specific entries or um, something that happened that day, something that was a little bit more, mm. um, monumental i guess just just in the uh, comments a lot of people are loving what they're seeing rachel there's um some lovely comments and they're super clean beautiful fonts uh, you can see here love it very classy lovely paragraphs um yeah there's a lot of uh, cool. good feedback I feel like we've all got our favorite typeface i can see as well people are throwing their typefaces in there so uh, yeah keep them coming yeah let's, them let's coming. hear them let's... we've got we've got a uh, pop uh, Monster Rat Poppins, that's always a nice one. Um, oh. We've got Lato, Futura, you can't go wrong right with Futura. Of course, classic. Like that's just like absolute classic. Uh, it's like vanilla, but it's amazing. Everyone loves vanilla. <laughs> um, if you do like ice cream, that is. Um, of course we've we also like ice got cream. In there, we've got a few Venturas actually. There's actually, yeah, two Venturas. Uh, by Rebecca Rippon, uh, yeah, Voodoo Val, um, and also uh, Active Grotesque, Monica. Uh, Monica. That's a uh, good one. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, uh, all good feedback so far on what they're, what they're seeing and the fonts they like. Wonderful. Um, I also have another book here that I thought I would just share. Um, it is by Actual Source and it's a typography book. So they actually have, it's it has a hundred different typefaces and throughout the book, I mean, I've got my post-its here of the ones that I like, but um, mm. it's really just a book that showcases a hundred different typefaces and mm. um again borrowing some ideas from this they only used one color throughout the entire book which is also what we're doing today just black and white um mm. and then obviously they have a hundred different typefaces so that is an awesome book right? uh, I, anyways I like it's a really great it. resource it's very well designed um if you like typography mm. you will probably love it so that looks like the holy grail for any like yeah. designer so if they like type that is that is the book to uh, exactly to yeah <laughs> that was awesome very cool um okay so i guess we'll just get into it um so i showed i showed you before we went live but i've so i've like i said i've spent um quite a bit of time going through all the content and i've put it into um, an InDesign document, aligned it to the baseline, established my character paragraph styles, um, just because it's quite time consuming. And, you know, I think mm. that's a good little head start to have. <clears throat> so here's all of our content that we will be fitting into this nice little zine. 
Rachel, just on that book that you mentioned, we've got a few people asking, what was it called? The name? I feel like we can nicely plug that so, one. So it is called Issue 8, New Type Design, Shoplifters, Actual Source Books. An actual source is um, a studio. They have really great work. Definitely check them out. Awesome. Yeah, we got Leo. And they come out with uh, <laughs> they come out with different books. I don't know if it's every year, but like one year they did different illustrations, illustrators. Um, mm. They've done the typography one. I don't know if there, there might be a second version of this as well. But um, yeah, they do really awesome. cool work. Cool. Okay, so. Also, I've so what I've, I've so I've kind of started figuring out what typefaces I want to use with this. Last time I had um, a sans serif, a serif, and then um, like a bold extended sans serif mm -hmm. as well. So I'm trying to use three different typefaces once again, and I think I'm going to use all different than the ones I did last time. So right. last time it felt very. Um, modern and sans serif and I thought it'd be nice this time to maybe go a little bit heavier on the serif um put all the mm. set all the body copy in Garamond which is a very um classic typeface so something that I'm I'm looking to maybe have this one feel a little bit more um traditional mm. in a sense and less you know mm. take it a little bit away from the large sans serif so anyways these were just some tests that I did this is um one of the entries mm. for one of the days. Um, so again, this is just me kind of figuring out which typefaces I want to use. Um, this one mm. is Canela, which is a lovely serif. I'm sure many people are familiar. I feel like it's kind of had a moment. Mm. Um, I also looked at maybe just like Times New Roman. Um, and then looking at some of these display typefaces, I'm mm. really into the scripts right now. So. I think I'm going to use a script with the Garamond. Nice. Um, and then I might also do another extended typeface similar to what I did last time. But mm. I just thought I would share some of these um, quick studies. Mm. I was trying to figure out like how funky do we want to go with it? How much personality? <laughs> so some of these are obviously mm. um, a bit more expressive than others. I was just going to say the the vibes of the sort of funky Friday, like I'm getting some sort of groovy yeah. sort of <laughs> girl feel for it. It's amazing how like different typefaces evoke kind of different emotions, right? Um, exactly. What looking at. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so this was kind of where I landed a little bit. Um, this may change, but I, yeah, I, I, this is what I'm thinking. So we have our nice um, ornate script here, which I thought could be, you know, I like these fluid, um, more ornate mm. movement and um, yeah, structure, I guess. Um, and then we have our classic Garamond. I also found a narrow version of Garamond, so perhaps we'll use that. Um, and I have set all, like I said, I've set all the entries in um, Adobe Garamond, I've aligned it to the baseline. Um, and then here we have Druk, extended bold so i'm thinking that could be a nice little complement to these other two nice all right so and just for uh, i was gonna say just for some of the guys i've seen a lot of people sort of just joined in now as well just so um they've got an, an idea of what's what's going on we've got obviously rachel um a graphic designer who's actually in the process of creating a typographic zine which is interpreting her notes over the past year that she's had. So for anyone who's just joined, obviously big welcome. Um, and you're in a good time because you're just about to go into the real nitty gritty of, uh, of the project. Yes, of it. So, um, just about to get started. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, are, um, are many of you guys list people or Kieran, do you, mm. do you make lists? Are you a list person? Do you know what? I'm a, I'm a stickies kind of guy. I have stickies mm. like posted notes. I guess, it's, yes. yeah, posted notes, stickies. And yeah. they're dotted around, um, I guess, environmentally, like it's probably not the best. I mean, I do reuse them. I sort of turn them inside out and we stick with like a sellotape on top. Yes. Um, but I, I I, try and be a bit of a pen to paper kind of guy as well. Like yeah, the idea of going on a computer, it's, it's yeah, because I'm always on the computer a lot. So it's nice to, you know, Moleskin book. I live by Moleskins. I've got uh, yes. obnoxious amounts of copies of Moleskin book. So yeah. So you just have I, like I just, piles um, of them somewhere. Piles of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're literally strategically placed in different parts of the, uh, the bookshelf but I, I um I like the sort of a6 ones though like the smalls you can kind of put in your Ooh, you know, like yeah. pocket 
yeah that's so nice. when you're out and about like when you could go no lockdown but you could just you know go on about and on the train writing your notes and um i like to just draw as well and uh, do you sketch when you start a project are you a, a sketch person yeah it's, it's funny i was talking to um yeah at university we talked today we, we were sort of talking about you know jumping on straight onto a project and do you do everyone see every designer has their different ways and right i think i'm like i like the idea of just having pen to paper first and just trying to just draw out and even when i find inspiration you have your obviously hearts you have different platforms available but right i just like to go out and it sounds like a weird thing to do but i people watch and i draw and I get inspiration. I used to do life drawing at uni, so I get inspiration okay. from from those kind of elements as well. So um, cool. it's nice to get away from the screen, right? And just yeah. You know, it's also yeah, out. just yeah, just getting in. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, getting inspiration mm. not on a screen, I think, is something cool, that yeah. we all can agree is very valuable these days. Yeah, I wonder what everyone in the chat's like. How do you guys find inspiration? You know, where do you? online books you know out and about people watching if right. you do it <laughs> i'll be curious to know where people i can see yeah uh, we got uh yeah people watching is one of my favorite things to do mm. there's quite a lot of content in new york so <laughs> never bet. never short of people watching um all right so here we go let's get into it let's start this document so we are going to print here obviously like I said we're probably just going to print this digitally um if money were no object we could you know go crazy and have some spot colors and PMS swatches and foils mm. and special Embossed. binding techniques <laughs> exactly nice. um <laughs> but yeah today we're just we're just going digital print nice and simple so we're gonna do four by six we can imagine a world where our budget's no option and we can just, you know. Oh, right. <laughs> it's like every design, every design is like awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna follow the same margins I did last time, which is 0.25 inches. And then on the inside, I did 0.5 inches in case you wanna add some page numbers later on. Um, and then we had six columns, which I'm gonna keep and 0.125 inches for the gutter. And then for bleeds, we'll do 0.125 inches, which is pretty standard. Um, yeah. So, the, I, you yeah, know. Comments. Sorry, no, go on, Rachel. I know you're fine. Um, six columns is just, you know, sometimes it's nice to have an even number. It's, you know, easy to make pairings and things like that. Um, so then I'm going to go into my master here and i'm going to establish some rows so let's see so i'm curious as well in the chat i wonder you know people students any professionals they're going to be curious to know you know everyone's got their own sort of different way and especially when i start a document grids guides columns um where from you know feel free to possibly put in the chat where you're from or for your you know professional uh, we could sort of know what everyone's what everyone's uh, space is, what they're working in. Yeah, totally. Uh, Design is so subjective. There are so many different ways of doing one thing. So, it's yeah. It's, I I think it's always interesting to hear how other people work, and um, okay. there's always something different you can learn every time. <clears throat> and just um, on that as well, actually, you made a good point. The whole learning process, Behance is you know that's great for it. There's a lot of um, so you can immerse yourself the creativity and obviously you can see the process of different works and obviously your work's on there as well and so is mine and the feel for creative behind the work as well through Behance so it's um you know definitely recommend <clears throat> excuse me if you're on YouTube to you know go onto Behance and just check out the different profiles on there um just touching on what you were saying Rachel before yeah and yeah like you were saying as well just watching somebody else work is a really nice way of learning so you know you'll see people doing different kinds of shortcuts you know there's things that you don't even you're not even aware of like little key <clears throat> commands. Um, I feel like there's always a faster way of doing something. So it's Definitely. always, and it was releasing different things, right. In terms of like shortcuts. So like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to play catch up sometimes, but <laughs> it's cool. I to... mean, if you're, yeah, if you're really savvy with the programs, I mean, you can, yeah. you can be a real wizard with it. Um, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just block these. We can also actually, these on a layer just on the uh, the programs i'd love to know, you know on the chat what's what's your 
from an Adobe? Are you an illustrator? Are you an InDesign, Photoshop? Obviously today we're promoting InDesign, but uh, what, what's, your, what's your thing? What's your weapon? <laughs> um, yeah. Me personally is like InDesign all the way. It's um, my favorite by far. Mm. What about you? I, yeah, I'm totally gonna, yeah, write an Instagram. Instagram design train. Um, <laughs> I also like, I also like Insta Illustrator too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they all serve their different purpose. Exactly. But exactly. I find I'm in design mm. most of the time. Yeah. I feel like I want to I wanna get a lot better, especially with the tutorials and the challenges that they have on Adobe, but with Photoshop, because Photoshop's one of those ones I feel like you're forever, like every other program, right? But in particular, Photoshop, there's a whole world of what you can Oh my God, it's like a learn. completely different language. It's I feel like it's just like <laughs> yeah. very dense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it program to, to work through definitely so, uh, yeah and the features that we have on adobe as well the creative challenges that that definitely helps you to get a better program so you know definitely keep on board or track of the creative challenges that we have at adobe because um yeah help totally um so i forgot to put in my page count so we're just gonna start with 24 that's what i ended up with last time um okay cool so here we go. Um, so what I'm actually, something I did decide I wanted I wanted to keep from the last issue was the cover. Um, and I think it could look nice um, in a bunch of different typefaces, you know, if, it, if it's something that I continue to do. Um, yeah, ha keeping this layout, but using the different typefaces for each one. So here I'm going to use, let's try, the script and since this is a script we need to go tricks zero scripts are kind of funky I feel like there's a lot of um, <laughs> mm. customizing you have to do with it so let's see if we can get this to look nice yeah I'm getting very uh, elegant vibes from uh, your 365 that that's great <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a script is, I mm. I feel like I don't use a script very often, so, but it's pretty, See, My brain's yeah. to the goal from, like, the, the, the thicker edges of the uh, the numbers, you know, if you had to do that, would be quite cool. Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, can you say that again? I There was a little bit like of a, a lag. Like a, like a gold foiling, if you could do, like, if mm. you had, you know, budget was no option and we could, you know, on the 365, you could have, like, the thicker parts nicely in gold or... Oh, yes. You know, things that everyone wants to have fun with, right, when it comes to, to print it. So, again, I'm just playing around with the relationship of these specific numbers. It's also a very um, italic. We can see as well, we've got some, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, people's, yeah, we've got uh, Hillary, uh, Britain, uh, talking about Premiere Pro. Yeah, Premiere Pro, that's a good one, actually. Premiere Pro, Photoshop, After Effects, that's her favorite. Um, we've got Nadia, you're talking about uh, I work in Illustrator and Photoshop mostly, and learn how to use InDesign. Uh, wouldn't it be great to see uh, DCC for InDesign? It definitely would be. I'm sure they will release one of those out shortly um, <laughs> to get more of a feel for that. But yeah, keep them coming and see what your favorite programs are. Be good to know. Premiere Pro, so many different versions of Garamond. Um, okay, so. Uh, the thing that's there. odd is um, since, you know, this one is three numbers and this one's four numbers, getting these to fit. So I'm just really playing around with type sizes here. Um, Oftentimes I like to just kind of make a mess, if you will, and just mm. kind of try a bunch of different things. Um, and then maybe take a break, come back and see what works and what didn't work. Do you ever like use the page? I mean, I always tend to, when I'm doing, especially on a single page for now, 
like mm-hmm. my pasteboard is just covered oh, yeah. and it's almost like you don't want to see it it's just like you, you can't see yeah. it yet it's not ready and, <laughs> and then you totally. bring it on. or i'll just like duplicate a page and like change two things yeah. duplicate it again like change one thing and then uh-huh. you just kind of click through at the end and yeah, it's like okay yeah that's working that's not working definitely we need to live in a world rachel where you have like screens just you know like a like matrix like where you can just kind of grab yeah. and, you know i'm sure one day just we'll like a, release that a giant pasteboard <laughs> the walls a minority report that would be that would be great yeah. <laughs> um we've got cheryl asking and the question uh, what is your favorite inspiration source um mm. rachel um i mean honestly i use pinterest a lot um i feel like once you kind of get that algorithm going and mm. you know it's like so many other sources kind of funnel into that so i actually have quite a bit of luck using Pinterest. Um, but you know, there's other blogs, um, fonts and use is a really great one for uh, seeing typefaces yeah. that are applied, um, across old and new designs. Mm. Um, what else? I don't know. What, what about you is, what do you, what's your go-to? What do I use? What's my go-to? I need to see my bookmarks for this. Um, yeah, no, Pinterest is definitely a, a, a good one. And, um, I mean, Instagram, I mean, it's, it sounds like a weird yeah, one, but yeah. I guess, I mean, totally. I follow a lot of designers and, and you know, um, uh, creative agencies and just see on their work that they, that they release, I sort of bookmark that as well. Um, so I've got a few sort of things selected off the back of that. Um, Agreed. You know, it's kind of cool to see work. Yeah. Um, okay, so I forgot to, we're going to save this. Uh, we've got After Effects as well as someone's favorite, Kerry Clark. That's, that's a... Uh, I haven't really used After Effects. Have you used that much before, Rachel? Um, a little bit here and there. I would love to be more fluent in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can do really simple animations here and there. Mm. Um, I also feel like file naming is like a very <laughs> personal thing and like everyone has such a distinguished yeah. system. What do you have I any... Like to, um, mm. how, how do you name your files? I was gonna say I like I like to think of naming files as like going into someone's kitchen and like opening the fridge and just seeing mm-hmm. if I mean everyone has their own way of doing it and you can't criticize right. and I'm I'm good for it. I with my <laughs> file names, I mean I'm I I do yeah I, I keep it neat. I'm I'm a color code as well. I'm nice. a color code with the stick. I think I yeah my brain just yeah. told me green is good, red is bad, right? And then yes yeah <laughs> so yeah I'm a I'm a I'm a sort of fairly organized on that front. Um, I like to do all caps. Ah, every, every files yeah. and all caps is it to say yes the excitement of just like just, or was it just just so caps? excited yeah <laughs> um i don't know I, something about it just like feels neater to me it's like okay. you know okay same cap height and baseline and no a centers yeah. no, and b centers it's just like this thick yeah i love that oh yeah <laughs> And for everyone in the chat, you're getting a real insight into, into our creative space of like how yes. designers work. And this is amazing. Like I love the fact obviously we're from different parts of the world, but you know, knowing how both work together. Um, we've got a question here, Rachel, for you as well. Is um, Rachel, uh, how did you set up? Uh, how, did set, how did you set up your grid? That's what, uh, Voodoo Vow is uh, asking. So, <clears throat> great question. Um, I am using the same grid that I made last time. So I'm doing six columns, eight rows. I'm doing 0.25 inch margins around the outer edges. And then on the inner edge, I've doubled that to 0.5 so that we can later on add a page number in there. Um, And I'm also going to adjust my baseline grid now. So since we have a lot of content, I think the baseline grid is very useful. So I'm starting at 0.25 inches, which is where the top of my margin starts. And I'm going to do four points um, since the letting of my body copy is four. So like I mentioned before, um, you know, there's a lot of content, so it's not necessarily red if you want it to, but um, I am setting this at point or 2.5 uh, point size typeface. So it's quite small, a little bit more of a textural element. Um, and again, if you wanted to really read it, you can read it. Um, and the last one that I printed, I think I did, I, did, I also did two, 2.5 um, for the type size and mm. it is legible um, when it's printed. So mm. 
keeping just that on that as well actually we never touched on it but like you got the print copy there like stock paper stock i feel like every designer we could have like a, a solid two hour chat about <laughs> this but we, we haven't got we haven't got that long totally. unfortunately but have you got like a favorite stock um, I mean, that's a really bold. Um, I mean, I think the nicest one that I've worked with is Cranes Letra. I think it's just called Cranes now, actually. Uh, okay. um, it is like a very toothy, uncoated paper. It's like great for um, letter pressing and different processes like that. So that's more of like mm. the high end. Um, this is just printed on like an uncoated, I think it's Cougar, which is just um, pretty inexpensive. Mm. paper it still has like a tiny bit of a uh, tooth to it so it's not like you know just regular printer paper super smooth um mm. but yeah i find that to be quite nice yeah. do you have a one, do you have a favorite do i have a favorite stock i do you know what it's 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 hard to kind of pinpoint i mean i've got a, a gf smith book i don't know if you sort of see in the sort of bottom corner but oh um, nice i yeah for, for anyone who, who maybe in the chat doesn't know much about gf smith you know that's quite an uh I guess the holy grail for a lot of designers in terms of where you should get your print stock from. Um, obviously, you've got other, you know, printers and, and things available. GS Smith's quite a good one uh, for paper stock. So, yeah, I mean, I, I find, I mean, I'll just be browsing in there for ages and just trying to get in you know, the right print. And I think the luxury of when you do, well, when you've got to get time on your side is to do tests as well. So, like, when mm -hmm. you're, you know, if you've got time on your side, you can, you know, do a quick test, check, this, check how the ink is soaked into the stock exactly and um and checking that out but um it'd be good to know everyone in the chat again if you've got any favorite print stock um maybe if you're not from a design background you're just curious to know about just design in general um you know where you might want to get places from like i said gs smith's quite a good one um but yeah just just putting out there. if you've got any favorite <clears throat> stocks please uh, let us know yeah and like you said i feel like it also depends on the project you know that can drive mm -hmm. what kind of paper is it elegant is it sustainable is it you know right focused on craftsmanship or is it something a little more sleek and modern mm. um so much Just the key word as well sustainability right eco you gotta be eco-friendly right. uh, yeah it's so important to, to touch on that i don't know um okay so i have just kind of starting to lay in some content here so another thing that um, i find is helpful is to just kind of first get the content into place and then you can kind of start moving it around and seeing what makes sense. Um, so last time to again, go back to this, I had this kind of um, intro page title spread. So I'm thinking we can maybe do something interesting with that. Um, and then I also had a table of contents last time. So I think this could be a cool way to again, pull out mm. how we might measure a year. Um, maybe some big graphic like numbers, that. so something like that. Um, but right now I'm just kind of starting to set things in place. Um, so here, let's see. So last time. You've got a, uh, another question for you, Rachel, on this on the, on the front of uh, the topic of design. Uh, Rachel, where are your favorite places to go for visual content to populate non-client projects? Um, and also with clients, I assume they give you uh, content, but what if they don't give you any? What do you do then? That's a good question. Um, That's from Voodoo Val. Uh, okay, so my favorite place to find visual um, content. Hmm. I mean, I, I think it definitely depends on the nature of what you're creating. I mean, is it something that we're going to use photography? Is it something that we're going to use? I don't know, maybe pieces of images of art scans. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I don't, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure that I have a very specific go-to. Again, I kind of like hoard everything on Pinterest, and like you said, I have a, lots of mm. saved images on Instagram as well. And I think those are also great mm. resources to find other places, maybe photographers or um, mm. no, places like that. So yeah, and, that... I'm sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, go for it. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, and then I was just gonna say for. Um, for clients, yeah, it is, it's, they'll typically provide the content. Um, yeah, mm. again, if they don't, then you just have to create some, whether it's through words or colors or shapes or, mm. um, you know. Lauren images. Epson, right, as well. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that you, I think a lot, of, I don't know if there's any designers in there, but you can always relate that sometimes copies in the, in the process of happening. So then 
you you know i know i've done some projects where i've i've, I've got to create a book but actually just in the process of with copywriters so you might use lauren epsom and for those maybe who don't know lauren epsom in the, in the in the chat it's basically just greek text but it's it's um dummy copy that you could use um so I, yeah i don't know if you have the same rachel but just using lauren epsom quite often until stuff comes in right Yes. Um, yeah. So oftentimes that's how we'll find like a word count. So we'll kind of design a page to look ideally how we would want it, um, fill it with lorem ipsum and then go back to the client and say something like, Hey, you know, this is roughly 250 words. Um, and then you kind of work to the layout in that way. Sometimes the content comes first, sometimes it comes second. So it just depends. Mm. Okay. It always becomes hard when they, uh, if they go over above, what you know if you, it's 250 words and then they give back 500 and it's like ah oh, ah oh, cool let's, right uh, let's make this work <laughs> so uh, yeah that's always uh there's like, obviously that's our job right to solve problems as well creatively so you know it's all part of the the mix yes it's like a little puzzle yeah um okay so again here i'm just kind of um kind of working sporadically but what i'm trying to do again is um lay out some different ways to call out these pages. So I think, you know, last time I did like a half black, half white page, which I think is kind of nice to have some sort of pacing here. Um, so maybe we'll do that again. Uh, and then I think it's kind of nice to have this sort of introduction into what this is. So maybe it says, you know, write something every day. Mm. And now I'm just playing with the different typefaces. It's quite nice as well, like even just that caption to write something every day, because I guess life takes over and just having to sit down and just having to actually write something could just right. be, yeah, it's difficult. So that's quite a nice. Um, and just like a very thing. simple prompt. Yeah, it's like it doesn't yeah. have to mean anything or, you know, be, be mm. well written. It's just. Yeah. You know, we, we actually have an off phrase, just smile, like not that we don't smile in the house, but just little prompts just to. You know, it doesn't take long just to, just to do these things. Breathe, smile, you know, be happy. Exactly. Um, yeah. Smiling is free. <laughs> totally. You can't see them now with the masks, but anyway, that's hopefully we're going to be out of, out of that period where we can we can do that. Just curious, has anyone got any, again, in the chat, you know, anything that kind of keeps you guys afloat, especially in the lockdown, with obviously what we're doing with Rachel um, in terms of her, you know, documenting her space that she's been here for a, you know, over a period of a year. Um, does anyone have any sort of, things that they do in terms of that kind of keeps them afloat um you know in the inspirational quotes that you want to share with us um and just on that as well just so anyone who's just joined us as well um just to let you know obviously we've got rachel with us um from new york the graphic designer who's working currently on a typographic zine uh which is interpreting her notes over the past year so um yeah welcome for anyone who's just joined um and yeah you've come in at a very good time because we're now having a little play with uh with fonts So here's that wide typeface, which is, it is quite similar to what we did last time, but there's something nice about that. So again, just starting to kind of set some things in place. I'll probably end up moving this around later, but um, yeah, just like this nice little prompt. So maybe, maybe the cover looks something like this. Um, we mm. might, we may end up changing this, but um, again, introducing that serif, or the, the script and the serif. Some of these, oh, this is so not the right here. 2020. Um, yeah, the relationship of these numbers is interesting. I think it's, it, I think it could be kind of cool too if it bled off the page. Yeah, no, totally. Like Even there's... when you just, I know it was a mistake that dash that came up. I was like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, where were you going with that one? I kind of, I kind of like that off. <laughs> Okay, and I'll play the off there. Um, like we've got some really nice like... comments as well in the uh, in the chat. We've got a uh, yeah, uh, a lovely one from Voodoo Rao. Uh, when I can't create and the lockdown gets me down, I write fantasy fiction. It's a creative escape that always gets me back up to my feet. Um, that's so cool. That's quite a nice one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ooh, and like so... you said too, just carrying around a notebook and you know maybe writing observations down or just sketching something. Do you have? Yeah. Um, I don't know what's your, do you have like a sketching style or is it like pen? Is it pencil? Yeah. Is it loose? Yeah. Is it like, do you know what I used to do? This is going to sound really embarrassing, but I use, and it, it's kind of stuck with me, but as a kid, I was obsessed with highlighter pens, you know, like the, Ooh, um, yeah. the gel. And I mean, 
I'm 30 years old now. I don't carry those. I mean, you can. There's no reason. There's no age. You know, whatever you want to play with and pens and stuff. But um, I definitely have a, a crazy amount of like highlighters, and and, and I do that. I, I I draw. I like to highlight everything. Um, I'm gonna go off piece now. But as a kid in school, I used to get told off because I used to highlight way too many things and <laughs> like, you know, school dates and, and things like that. But um, yeah. But yeah in, in terms everything of like was now, important. <laughs> Everything was just like yellow highlight. It's just like the date. It's a Thursday. Cool. Highlight it. It's just, you know, it needs to be known. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 I carry that. highlighters and like pens and yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to mix so you, them up as well. So you're carrying on the um, highlighter, <laughs> highlighter <laughs> trend. It's like go, go, go gadget. Just like a, you know, waistcoat and just like loads of pens, practically different color sizes. And So you, you must have like a big, yeah. uh, like a nice big pencil bag or something. Do you know what? I, I used to have that. I don't, I've got like pot, pots now. I don't really carry pencil. I just carry them just back pocket. I don't even like pencil cases. That's, that's so old school, but I love that. I don't even have a pencil case anymore. I don't know if I, <laughs> you just a pencil like, yeah. case. Yeah. I need to get, I can't just carry them around and just start, you know, I'll just throw them back pocket or just in, in the top pocket and see where it goes with it. Um, yeah. I think grown ups need painting in their stories too. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. More coffee book tables. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like mm. in the last year, just everyone, you know, being confined to their homes, mm. you kind of have to get creative with, you know, yeah. things that you have around the house that maybe you kind of neglected before, whether it be, you know, books or games or developing mm-hmm. a new, a new hobby. Mm-hmm. We've got some really nice suggestions in the, um, again, I know you're in the experiment stage, but we've got the uh, yeah, Uriel, if I'm right in saying that, uh, maybe have the twos and the O's slightly different colors and have them weave in and out a bit like the Olympic rings. So, uh, oh, so some like overlapping shape. happening. Mm. That would be nice. It's quite nice to mix them up. Um, um, yeah. So what I've done now is I've switched over to a new document because um, that last cover wasn't quite... Um, Getting where I want it to, where where I wanted to go didn't, doesn't feel right yet, um, so I'm just going to kind of go off on a tangent. And um, I've just created the document that's the size of the cover, and so we can just kind of go wild and um, play around with a bunch of different um, layouts. I mean, obviously, we're sticking to this um, this layout that we've established, but how can we get creative within that? And um, you know, I think. I don't know about everybody else, but oftentimes you can kind of kind of like know when it feels right and you just have to kind of like Definitely. mess with it until you get there. And um, so, yeah, just kind of playing around with that right now. I like how you well, and you mentioned, I think previously, where you, you have them bleeding off the page, but enough that you know what the number is, if you know what I mean. Just totally. Just in. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, we definitely want it to still um, be legible. Um, uh, we've got a lovely question for you again, Rachel, uh, on the on the topic of uh, what inspires you. Uh, who uh, who are some creatives that inspire you and your work? Um, they don't have to be editorial designers. It could be anyone, or musicians, or whatever. Anything that just inspires Rachel Roth. <laughs> oh, um, mm, I would say yeah, definitely. Okay, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think it's great, like kind of as you mentioned, to find inspiration outside of just, you know, a graphic design world. Um, mm. You know, like I really enjoy going to museums, um, just like how each museum is set up so different, you know, the way you navigate a space um, mm. kind of, influences how you see the art um, like for example i'm thinking of the guggenheim which is a very specific structure it's a very um, wonderful museum out here and it's set up like a kind of this like ascending spiral so you actually see the art as you're mm. you know going up in this uh really cohesive winding path um so yeah i mean i like i think architecture can be super interesting um I like just like going outside and walking around and New York is full of stimulation. So I think even just walking around and seeing the different street signs and different neighborhoods and, you know, people are always creating interesting things out here. So I find, um, I find New York as 
a whole to just be incredibly inspiring and simulating yeah. in that sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's mm, not necessarily cool. like one specific place. It's just kind of Makes anything sense. and everything, I guess. Yeah. Um, what about you guys? What's uh, what yeah, are some good? Yeah, know what everyone's saying. I mean, it's interesting because you mentioned, you know, again, you know, geographically we're both based. Obviously, you're in New York. I'm in London. You know, it's mm -hmm. completely. I think mean, there's definitely some similarities with, you know, in terms of well-built up cities. You know, quite condensed and and populated. Um, but again, it's there's obviously a lot of people in different chat and the chat here from different parts of the world. It'd be good to know, you know, where do you find your inspiration from? Um, for me personally, I mean, back when you know we, we could go out and do a bit more, you know, um, things. Um, and I guess now we're starting to ooze up, which is great. Um, I always find inspiration from when I gave talk with, with students and I think with grads as well. Like um, I gave a talk today at my old uni at Southampton, Winchester School of Art and, you know, sort of, you know, hearing their experiences and also more importantly, um, talks on previously, you know, just seeing the work that they kind of have. You know, that in itself is quite inspiring because I guess every sort of graduate that comes up is like a different wave of how, what they've learned and what they've sort of gone through that process. So, yeah, I mean, you could keep looking at work online and, and seniors, but it's quite cool to see what people who are younger than you kind of working on too um totally yeah yeah i feel like schools in general or universities are just like very inspiring places everyone is you know you're you're less confined by you know the professional world and things mm. are still very open and new and um i feel like it's almost it's just like different kind of creativity definitely we've got kerry clark she uh finds uh, nature i mean that's yeah totally can Definitely. relate with that right everyone going on walks right at the moment and uh checking out your local areas um, and movies and tv commercials yes. that's a good one as well yeah love movies i mean you got to put it out there with lockdown what, what's been your sort of stick out mm. movie if we've, uh... mm. you know I've that's actually probably the hardest started... question i've ever really. <laughs> I've actually started going back to the cinema. So I've been a few times, um, obviously wearing a mask and it's social distanced. Um, mm. But I recently saw Minari, which I thought was really nice. I liked Minari. Mm. Um, and then Nomadland. Those are just two more recent mm. ones. Um, another kind of unexpected uh, throwback movie I watched over break was um, Moonstruck with Cher and Nicolas Cage. It's from the 80s. Uh, um, yeah. Just like a classic like rom-com yeah. 80s. Uh, but yeah, this, this is good. I recommend it. I mean, you, you, have, are... you have me at Nicolas Cage to be fair, because I love yeah. anything he does. I mean, yeah. It's and quite... Cher, it's yeah. like <laughs> too good. The collaboration is strong. I love, I love it that. Is. <laughs> um again like even if anyone in the chat you know uh, films that you found in, you know inspiring oh we've got steve also see moonstruck moonstruck's very funny um steve steve's saying that yeah anything that you found that you found you know that's kind of you know inspired you or just kind of got you through this whole period of of you know this this crazy year we've all kind of had um it'd be good to know everyone's thoughts on that definitely <clears throat> i also watched um Funny Girl, which is an old musical mm. with Barbara Streisand and uh, the costumes and set design are just like completely oh. outrageous and saturated and over the top opulent decadent. So um, I, I think old, old, old yeah. movies like that, I think can be super inspiring too. just the set design and the costumes were mm. kind of next level. I feel like it's very like of the time. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, so again, uh, not to like get stuck on this one task, but um, I'm just trying to figure out how we want this cover to look, mm. um, all the different ways we can work within this constraint we've created. Um, like you said, it's like it can bleed off, but it needs to be just enough Mm. Are you gonna... legible even i don't know just just putting it out there even like if you stacked it as well i don't know whether that's uh i guess spacing what you've what you've got to like work this? with yeah potentially um cool. i don't know whether everyone's thoughts on that but yeah i mean that could i like that oh. yeah i remember seeing some of your work on on Behance, uh rachel which is awesome like 
overlapping. I think I saw a lot of um, mm. of that, which, yeah, that, that looks really cool. Um, which is that. also super nice to do with uh, different print techniques. Mm. Um, something I've worked yeah. on is like we layered typography with um, like a clear iridescent foil. So you can see the black type through the bottom of it. But mm. when you look at it in the sun, the sun kind of creates this um, full spectrum on the nice. holographic foil. <clears throat> I love so, that you're kind of using nature to like influence how your design's gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's awesome. So sorry, sorry I interrupted, but yeah, that, that's an awesome thing to do. Um, so yeah, again, just kind of taking a step back now and kind of looking at this. Um, I also really like, like I like the really big type juxtaposed with this kind of tiny type. So I'm thinking maybe something like mm. this. I think we've opened the floodgates now to the, <laughs> what's your favorite movie? There's a, there's a few fifth elements on them. Blade Runner, I've never seen Blade Runner. I I've heard never it's a seen classic, Blade Runner. Right? Ah, I've, I know many, many people that have seen it and said it's an absolute classic, but um, yeah, I feel like we're missing out on that, Rachel, if we've both never seen it, but we, yeah, there's a few Blade Runners add in it, there. Um, mm. Add it to the list. Yeah, I also um, keep a list of all the movies I've seen in a year, so I try to watch 50 new films every year. Oh, wow. Um, Oh. At first it was a hundred and then it's like, okay, this is actually not attainable. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are just square now. It's just like, yeah, I exactly. can, yeah. We've got a uh, Star Wars and Star Wars, of course. Are you a Star Wars Classic. Fan? Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, we've got a video about Star Wars is discovering your um, trust this, uh, true self and deciding what, what to do with your unique power. Uh, was it, what is it, what is that if not for artist's journey? Love that. Uh, any Nollywood films, uh, because I'm Nigerian, that's always quite nice, but you know, different cool. cultures as well, and to understand different, different movies, that's the best time. I'm, I'm myself trying to get into a lot more Spanish films, oh, cool. uh, so my, my, my partner's from, from Galicia and um, I'm trying to learn Spanish as well, so yeah, just trying to mix it up with, with different um, different shows on, on Netflix and you know, different things to watch that's in Spanish. Any, um, any good ones or any specific like directors or... Um, I mean, it's probably the, the real obvious, like probably top, you know, Spanish speaking uh, thing on Netflix is um, Narcos. I mean, I binge watched that thoroughly, um, but I'm actually trying to watch it now, um, you know, with, well, I mean, it, obviously they speak in Spanish, but, you know, just trying to have an understanding of it and pausing it and actually knowing these sort of keywords, right. um, which is quite nice. So, yeah, and just watching films that I've seen a thousand times, but watching it in Spanish or seeing it in subtitled Spanish okay. so I can yeah. understand. Like yeah, I can have fun with it and also and also learn. Um, so I've just seen the Terminator in in the chat. That's just completely. I love that as well. Just like boom, Terminator. Um, <laughs> cool. We've gone off piece there. Sorry about that. Uh, ah, I've got Hillary. Yeah, the poster works. Uh, yeah, poster work is great. She said that your design so far is looking great. It looks like a poster actually, doesn't it? Kind of. It yeah, does kind of look like a poster. Mm. Which is, which is cool. So I'm kind of thinking, um, I don't know, I, I just kind of like this idea of like serif on serif. Um, I mean, I guess mm. a script isn't, maybe it is a serif, I'm not sure. Is a script a serif or is that its own category? I, I, I want to say script serif, but I mean, if anyone in the chat can, can quote me differently, then feel out. free to, but yeah, I'd, I'd love that. It's weird because I, I like, I do love the, uh, the, the, the numbers on there and um I guess it'd be interesting to sort of see maybe, a, and this is just a, an idea, but like a different um, uh, typeface for maybe daily writings. I guess uh -huh. it's obviously all consistent with one another, but um, but yeah, I think as together, as together, like that works nice. Like my really? favorites are definitely the thick, well, like that one, for example. I, um, yeah, yeah, I do like this one too. That's quite nice. Yeah, I um, do like this one. Yeah, um, good to I know like, people's favorites though. I like this one too. I mean, this one's nice just because there is such a contrast between the script and then this super bold mm. extended sans serif. So I think um, that relationship feels good. Mm. So, okay, I'm gonna try one more thing with this. This maybe wasn't italic. Or if it's... You mentioned as well, like going on the topic of um, of print. I mean, it's a different type of print, but um, screen printing. Have you done that much before? 
Rachel? Um, I have yeah. not done much of that actually. Mm. Um, I, you know, I took a class in school, um, mm. but not a ton of real world mm. experience. Um, is that something that you've been able to work with? Yeah, and um, I think it's more in college and then university as well. We we um, we had like a screen printing room, and um, I was definitely more in college, I'd say actually. But yeah, it was fun to just play around with it. I mean, it's messy, right? So you you mm-hmm. feel like you make a mess. It's all part of the process. So um, again, if anyone, hopefully, you know, some of you might know what screen printing is, but it's just the idea of you know working with different colors and prints um, and kind of overlapping and, and layering on top. Um, but yeah, for anyone who hasn't done screen printing on on the chat, I already recommend it because it's it's quite a fun thing to to do and to work on very tactile mm. we've got a question for you rachel uh carrie's oxen uh rachel are you planning on doing this all in black and white or introducing color going back to um, before yeah so uh i am going to limit this to only black and white um so yeah it will be a true uh typography exercise i mean i guess you can still do it with color too but um yeah, I thought it could just be an interesting boundary to play with. Um, like I said, there's this type book that I'm re- referencing. Um, they printed everything with just a solid red color. So I thought there's just something really nice about that. Also black um, prints pretty consistently with a digital print. So I know that it will be legible and print nicely. I don't have to worry about colors. Um, you know, printing weird in CMYK and not not looking the way that I like them on the screen. Mm. So it simplifies that process a bit, but um, yeah, cause I was thinking about it and, you know, last time I made this, I used colors to differentiate it. Um, so I was even thinking, you know, maybe mm. does each season have a different typeface or something like that, but um, which Maybe it's something that will happen later on, but um, yeah, we're just gonna do black mm. and white for now and see how. And you goes. touched on um, like CMYK for anyone who doesn't really know much about, <clears throat> excuse me, like CMYK and RGB. So with RGB, it's, it's more for screen, and, and CMYK is you know when you want to export a print, um, so the colors will look slightly variant on screen. But when you go into print, it will look hopefully the way you want it to, as long as it's exported out. Um, but yeah, no, you made a good point. I, I think I totally relate what you're saying. Um, with colors as well and i think with black and white it's you know it, it can be quite more striking i think as well i agree just, do you know what i mean so um yeah i'm totally with you on the black and white um, on that. Um, yeah there's something like some... very pure about it as well mm, um, mm. it's neutral right and quite right yeah. yeah i mean not to say that this year was colorless <laughs> but <laughs> Um, we got positives though, right? We're coming out hopefully, and there's vaccine, and yeah, we're, we're, there's more positivity. So maybe the oh, next absolutely. One could be color. And yeah, I think I think we all needed a little, um, mm. you know, wake up call or just kind of new perspectives. I mean, obviously, it's been um, more challenging for some than it has for others. So. Mm. I think we've got a few of your friends. Maybe, maybe uh, we've got a shout out to the big homie Rachel uh, from Jonathan Marzet. Is that right? In oh, that? what's that? up? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a, we've got a few people in there as well. Um, these live streams have kept me going actually, and I've been inspired to do some live streams myself. Ah, it's great tonight. Very from cool. Rebecca Rippon. So um, yeah, I mean these these you know that's that's such a nice thing to hear. And you know, kind of going back to what we said previously. If you're not already on Behance, you know, very much go on Behance, make an account. And obviously there's a lot more creatives that you can sort of see their process and watch, you know, the stuff that they've done from start to finish. Um, and just basically just immerse yourself with different creatives. I think it's a, it's a cool thing. So, um, yeah, that's that's a really nice thing to read that it's, it's helped through lockdown because there's a lot of stuff to kind of go through on, on the Adobe Live um, Behance. So, um, yeah, you can't get bored really in terms of what you can see. Great. Well, yeah, and like we were saying too, just um, watching somebody else create and kind of seeing the cadence of um, other people's process, I think, is super valuable. Mm. Definitely. Um, so I think you know, like I said last time, I had a color for each season, so that was kind of um, almost acted as a chapter divider in a sense with this transition of color that's when you knew it was the next season 
So I was thinking for this, since we aren't having color, it'd be nice to have these very graphic um, divider spreads that just, you know, signal that it's kind of the mm. next chapter of the year. So um, again, I'm just kind of placing content at this point. Um, this is all very just kind of explorative at this point. Um, and mm. yeah, kind of figuring this out as we go along, but starting to establish some. Uh, what's the, um, sorry, here. Rachel, what's the name of that font? Do you, cause we've got a few, um, they like the chunky one. And I, I feel I want to say the actual name of the font, but I don't, I mean, I can say chunky one, but I don't even know what the, uh, uh, I think it's the, the, that one yes. there. Yeah. What's the name of that font? So this one is Druk. There we go. Um, let me see. I can't remember so which foundry it is right now. The, uh, for the chunky font lovers in the in the group, there's a few. That's 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 the name of the font. If you're if you're curious to see. Um, commercial type. So. Drunk. I love that. This is yeah. <laughs> um, and it comes in a ton of different styles. Um, there's wide, condensed. Um, yeah, it's a great. Mm. Very versatile sans serif. I feel like it there works perfectly as like like a, a title page or even like a you know mm -hmm. a cover design or even just body copy if you if you space it out well enough. Um, is it all bold or is there like a regular as well? Or um, let me see actually. Yes. So in this particular style that I'm using, and this might just be the only weights that I have, it has okay. medium, bold, heavy, and super. Let's see what super. Super. Looks like. <laughs> Like we have big or bigger. <laughs> I love that. Just, uh, <laughs> we don't do anything less than small, uh, anything less than medium, I should say. Um, right. Uh, yeah, some really good feedback on here. Um, what they're seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, Rachel. Um, Biola said, amazing. Um, yeah, really, really liking what they're seeing, which is great. Oh, thank you for the encouragement. Yeah, it's like, you. I, I don't know, in my mind, I really wanted to use that script on the cover here, like in the big, have the big letters be that script. Um, mm. And yeah, just by those quick studies that we did, I'm not, it doesn't really feel right. So I am kind of, I'm kind of liking this. There's like a nice, um, yeah, like we said, just like a nice contrast. So mm. thinking that might be where we end up. So again, this is, um, this was the cover last time. So very sans serif, but then obviously we had this um, nice serif here, yeah. saying blue. Um, Would you, um, it could be interesting, just, just as an idea, that that one that you liked, um, <laughs> you know, obviously working with just black and white, if you mm -hmm. so inverted it, so the text was white on a solid black. I don't know whether- That'd be cool. Um, maybe just, um, do you know what I mean? Just, uh, Another, let's see. So. And just to add as well for anyone, excuse me, who's uh, who's just sort of just come in as well, what you're looking at now. So we've got the wonderful Rachel of us who is designing a typographic zine, uh, basically just documenting her a past year um, in a sort of zine format. So you've got now we're in the process of playing around with type um, and the contrast of black and white and just trying to get things to paper. Um, so yeah, you join us at a good, good stage. So here's the the inverse, which is... Nice. Yeah, it's quite striking. Right, it up. The only thing I wonder is um, with printing on inverse with this script, if the script isn't large enough, if that would... Mm. Um, legibility wise you mean yeah exactly yeah just something to think about mm. that's a really good point i think even when you know any jobs we do really in terms of editor it's um the million dollar i guess from an aesthetics you it might if you're going really small and maybe it doesn't you know matter from that perspective but if you're doing usually a book you know legibility is, is the key so i yes. guess for anyone in the chat as well who's in that process of wants to do a book or you're curious about how editorial works, you know, um, the key obviously legibility needs to be obviously at the forefront um, of the of the mind as well. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, here's, so these are, so I've gone through and just kind of pulled out um, mm. 
some pieces that maybe we could use at a larger scale. Um, so actually tying back into our film discussion. Mm. Um, okay, so, so this was one, um, my sister read that there are enough restaurants in New York City that you could try, you could eat at three different restaurants every day and still try a new place. It would take you 23 years. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, and then Eyes Wide Shut is a film that I watched last year, which is a uh, Stanley Kubrick, super, uh, super weird movie. Very good. Is that Tom Cruise? One? Yes. No, and yeah, Nicole okay. Kidman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it was just like one of those movies that I had to read about afterwards because it was just kind of like what just happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it holds the record for the longest film shoot to date. It took 400 days to film that. And um, I guess Kubrick was kind of a perfectionist. And there was one thing I read that said he made Tom, Tom Cruise walk through a door 95 different times and reshot it, <laughs> just that one scene. <laughs> um, That's insane, place. but um, yeah. <laughs> and then I think, and then, yeah, he, I, he died like a month before the film was released. Mm. So yeah, just. It's a powerful film. Yeah, no, I mean, it's um, those kind of films, again, it's, yeah, I mean, it's almost like, I mean, I'm going a bit off piece here, but like for me, the kind of style of films like Wes Anderson, I don't know if, you, if you're if you into mm -hmm. Wes Anderson films, but it's so iconic and, you know, the style and the and the colouring and even the backdrops and even when nothing's yes. happening, when it's just just literally like a solid still set. Right. That in itself has a it's lot of It's completely impact. visual. It's insane. Um, yeah, are you a Wes Anderson fan? It's all like... Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. What's, what, I, what is his latest that came out? Do you know? Because I might Was it be... The, dogs the isle of i want to say the isle of dogs oh yeah yeah um, i saw that possibly if that's the latest one um if anyone's seen wes anderson i mean let me know if that's not the latest one if there wasn't before that but um i mean the classic I, for me is roll tenant bounds if you've ever seen that i've only seen it one time and i feel like it was mm. a while ago so i don't i don't like recall it super sharply um i really liked fantastic mr fox that one stands out to me oh, that's awesome yeah yeah we saw that quite recently, actually. That was, I think that's been out for a while, isn't it? But um, yeah, we made it, my partner and I made it on our disc to kind of go through every single Wes Anderson. Oh, yeah. And that was the last one. Um, yeah, that, that was awesome. That was really, really cool. Um, yeah. And again, yeah, if anyone hasn't, I, I hopefully, well, some of you may or not, uh, depending on which part of the world or, or in general, but if you haven't seen any Wes Anderson films, like the, you know, what Rachel and I are discussing about the color set and the look and feel and the aesthetics. If you're a designer, you tend to kind of love Wes Anderson films just on the basis of that. So yeah, totally recommend, um, you know, some Wes Anderson films to, to watch if you're curious to know about that space. Okay, so I'm gonna move this up into here. Um, another one that I liked and I had, so I've done, I've started to do some sketches here. Um, I thought it'd be cool too to play with type and a shape. Um, so this is like one entry from Valentine. Every Valentine's Day, they light up the Empire State red and it pulse, pulses like a heart. So mm -hmm. I thought it could be cute to do that in a heart shape. Um, I also didn't go through this, but I have a folder of references that I pull at the beginning of um, every project. So anything that um, plays off what we're doing. So again, here, like this is a great example of layering mm -hmm. type, but only using black, but having two different typefaces and how that could um, start to play together. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's something like this where there's kind of movement within the columns. Um, again, just like a super stripped mm -hmm. back, um, you know, this would be like a nice divider page. I also thought um, with some of the words that we had pulled out for 2020, so, you know, quiet, and still were some of those. So I thought it could be interesting mm. to even have some sort of breaker pages where maybe it's just black and then like in tiny type, um, we have something that happened that day or maybe something in the news or something dramatic. Um, mm. Could be a cool way to highlight that. Um, again, just like playing with mm. shapes. Um, I love that one. Something like That's this cool. is, yeah, really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, just, I think they have a really nice combination of typefaces here. Mm. Same here. So you're seeing that script um, with the sans serif. That's nice. Again here. Mm. 
I really like this too. I think this is nice. So I want yeah, to play around does, with really cool. um, something like this. Maybe we could bring in something, something like this for our um, mm. divider pages. So let's see. So just with that visual, you just showed it like it's quite, you know, calligraphy sort of style. Right. I mean, I've always wanted to, I mean, I, I absolutely admire like typographers, you know, who can, you know, create their own absolutely. typeface or to draw because that is an amazing skill to, I know there's loads of the typographers and designers on you know, oh, platforms yes. and parts, but so cool. So much respect. Mm. Um, so yeah, so maybe just kind of putting there to remember later on. Um, mm. So yeah, just like different ways that we can play with type and show movement and have this kind of expressive quality. Mm. Um, yeah, it's quite nice when you've got the different, you know, evokes of motion that you can get with types, right? And repetitiveness and mm -hmm. contrast and the shapes. It's, it's uh, yeah. I also really like this one. I want to. Mm. <clears throat> And this is, I mean, this is just like a very beautiful script, I think. I mean, I guess mm. it's kind of a, um, a serif with different flourishes, but mm. I thought that was really lovely. And I also like the simplicity of this. Um, mm. I did a spread kind of like this in my last one, uh, which was highlighting the solar eclipse. Um, I will... It looks like on, on newsprint. It looks like okay. it's on a newsprint. Nice. So I did something like this last time. Uh, yeah, maybe like out. Maybe <laughs> we use outline at some point. Um, mm. The New York Times Magazine also has really, really wonderful layouts and use of typography. Um, so mm. this was one that I had pulled. That again, just I like these like broken out lines of text. Yeah. Um, I also love this. It kind of goes in the same um, same philosophy of, you know, it's about the process. Um, but yeah, it's like note to reader. No book is without mm. errors. So love that. Um, another New York Times magazine. Like, I love this. It's so it's like messy, but it's still... Mm feels nice i don't know it feels like a sense of order like i don't know what you mean like everything's kind of happening at different spaces but there's like, like an order to it like a almost like a creative madness but um exactly like an madness, i should say yeah that's that's the one looking for yeah kind um, of this like yeah. organized chaos yeah that's the word yeah organized chaos that's <laughs> yeah just just on that so we've got cheryl um asking where did you get all these images from um yeah it'd be good to know where where would you get that from um yeah so again like not to just keep shouting out Pinterest, but um, that is where I pulled most of these. Like I said, it's uh, once you kind of get the algorithm going, then it just kind of pushes out um, mm. relevant images. And yeah, you can really go down a rabbit hole and find, I mean, there's a lot to sift through obviously, but mm. um, I also find it just an easy way to organize as well. And, you know, have all my boards. So I am a fan of that. And just on the uh, the chat again, it'd be good to know, like, you know, what's everyone's, you know, backgrounds. Are you a student? Are you are you a professional? Are you here for the very first time? Um, you know, what's, you know, um, obviously it's really good to have you all here. And it's always nice to know, you know, your different thoughts on, um, you know, why you're here to learn and, and so forth. So uh, yeah, please put in the comments. We're definitely encouraged to to sort of see, um, you know, which stage you're at or, or what you're currently doing in terms of profession or if you're a student, it'd be good to know. We just had another, um, on that topic of, um, this is probably the last one because I have to keep, you know, talk design work, but Wes Anderson, Great Budapest Hotel. I completely yes. forgot about that one. That's, like yes, that's a classic. really good one. Yeah. And that was from, uh, sorry, I that, from that was from uh, Uma Korn. Uh, so yeah, good, good shout. Um, so here, this was, I kind of cheated because I did this um, before our session, but what I did is I took um, a heart shape and then just did the type on the path. So now I'm just kind of tweaking it so that it is legible. Um, but I think it could be cool maybe to have, mm. uh, it's like interesting small, but it was also nice when it was really mm. big. 
The only thing with like with a saddle stitch, if, unless you have it on the center spread, um, there's yeah. sometimes is a little bit of an offset, but from one page to the next. So mm, mm. Um, that's always that sort of forbidden. <laughs> it's almost like that no point of no return. Once it goes into that sort of, you know, not gutter, I can't remember the term of it, but once it's in that sort of center bit, it's, right. it's lost forever, isn't it? <laughs> so like it's, yeah, knowing when especially, to yeah, uh, I mean, do it. Especially if you have like a bunch of pages, you know, then it just kind of gets like yeah. sucked in there. Like yeah. for a, like for a book like this, you oh, know, yeah. I mean, it would get, it's a goner <laughs> quite a bit eaten up yes yeah, um, but for something like this you know it's there's not many pages and it lays pretty much flat so it's um mm. right. it's more just a matter of alignment mm. which... oh, it's nice so we've got uh so hillary is a mum changing pathways um she has problems using types on shapes so yeah that's a good point actually so you've obviously done yours in the love harp um in terms of you know is that where you can quickly show us, like on typing on path? Like yeah, on, of course. Uh, yeah. um, okay, so let's see. Saw so that nice wants, oval yeah. shape. So um, let's find something. I guess we can just use this for an example. So maybe we can say that, you know, the circle is kind of like a plate. <laughs> And so we are going to place our note about restaurants. Okay. So, <clears throat> so yeah, once you make the shape, um, you just drop down this type tool here and type on a path. And then there's also all kinds of um, editing you can do here. So we can also, where's my this is where it starts and where it ends you can also play with our shape and it doesn't affect the type mm. um, maybe we go on the circle and it's kind of just like black hole but like once you've mastered that type and path you can just create any shape you want pencil right. or shapes given and just yeah have fun so um, yeah Hillary that's a good one to sort of play around with if, if you're um, sort of new to that and um again I know there's loads of Adobe tutorials on on, on that so um if you struggle you know definitely go on um, the Adobe tutorials and you can you can read up on that but uh yeah shape on path tool is always a good one to play around with you can also do now. um <laughs> like some sort of line here and No, I can't find the line. Let's see. <laughs> the, the forever line is so. There we go. Like, okay. Is there, but, uh... <laughs> nice. So actually, I'm kind of liking the way this looks. Like maybe we have. Um, Here we go. A page that's just. Yeah, different shape, like type on different types on path. It kind of reminds me of the one reference. Um, Mm. like something like this you know it's kind of this um mm. it's a bit more chaotic there's movement it's like a little bit messy and mm. i actually think that i think something like that could be could be cool um later on when we get to i need to, i still need to finish putting my content in here but i was thinking when we have um more of the content around the pandemic and different head, like have a bunch of um, headlines about mm. that. Like it could be cool to have just like this kind of like of chaotic <laughs> spread of, yeah, like all the different um, mm. COVID headlines and announcements and yeah, things like that. Cool. That's, that's quite a nice, um, almost like an organic way of how we just done that with, the, with that spread and the, now you've actually potentially, you, you like that one and then, so yeah, no, these kind of feedbacks are great because, you know, in the chat, when you're mentioning these, we can, you know, implement it and actually do it. And um, it's kind of nice yes. to see it come to fruition. So uh, yeah, I'm liking that already. Um, we've also got as well, Rebecca Rippon. Uh, she's an artist, educator in printmaking, um, studio art background, learning digital drawing, uh, and you want to be an illustrator. Um, so it's quite nice actually seeing the different, you know, uh, where everyone's at in the chat and um, 
And we spoke about Illustrator as well as a tool, I think, briefly. Um, that's one of my favorites as well, Illustrator. I don't know if you, do you use Illustrator much, Rachel? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely more, I use it, I'm sure like most, um, kind of in like the more initial phases of a logo design or, you know, vector images. Definitely great for things like that. Hmm. I feel like there's not much rules in Illustrator. That's why I love it. I just, I, cause I that's usually true. hide my artboards and I just, mm -hmm. I just feel like a child of a paint, paint pot. I just kind of go a bit, you know. And yes. then design and photos a bit more like okay something about illustrator feels a bit more lawless like it's just kind yeah. of just like <laughs> lawless. i love that <laughs> it plays by its own rules it doesn't <laughs> it has, exactly. yeah no rules awesome um so i want i'm thinking we could do something interesting um okay so actually let's um, see okay so this is so Quarantine happened, or COVID happened in March. Um, so that would technically be the end of March, it's like spring. So let's make spring our chaotic spread. And maybe we go back to our Duke. I love as well that you use the pasteboard again. I think we touched it before. It's like your point of reference. It's just it's just there, right? So again, exactly. for anyone who you know uses InDesign, that's that's the best way just to rather than going back and forth with your finder, just have it on your pasteboard and you can just, you know, yeah, close it and, and open it when you need it. The wide version. And also, I mean, obviously with reference to, <clears throat> it's great to have it there. Um, you know, sometimes it can be a little easy to find what you designed to be too close to it. So, you know, just kind of using it as kind of a guide or starting point, and then you kind of play around with it um, yourself until it feels different enough. Definitely. But I do think this could be an interesting Is that our, is that our drunk? Drunk text, isn't it? Yeah, drunk text wide. I love, yeah. I love that font. That's, that's a nice one. <laughs> We've got an interesting comment here. So I firmly believe that coders for illustrators are kept in cellars. Um, yeah, I guess it's it's a, um, yeah, it's it's I guess different um, you know uh, types of work and disciplines as well for different people. Um, I guess you're kind of locked away, aren't you, when you're in that space of it's quite an in, intense. But it can be intense, but also quite rewarding as well. Um, discipline to work in. Um, so yeah, interesting thing to say. But but yeah, I feel like it, you know, either way, I mean, I'm probably quite similar with my own design. I don't know if you find it, Rachel, when you're when you're locked away on a project, it's quite easy just to kind of, you know, Spotify in and just plugged away and you know, <laughs> yeah. hours could hours could go by, right? Sun sun tonight and not even realize totally what's happening around you. Yeah, I'm like a I could work. I, I like I like working at night. It's like easier for me to concentrate because there's less outdoor mm. distractions. Um, uh, you're a, you're a night designer. Okay, that's but, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to know. But yeah, I mean, you can really just go down a rabbit hole, and yeah, mm. hours pass. So, anyways, I'm thinking, you know, something like this is kind of starting to feel interesting um the reference we had had some like crooked letters so i, I what i think what we're trying to get across here is this idea um that spring is kind of when everything at least in the united states everything kind of exploded you know all of a sudden we're in this global pandemic what does this mean we're getting bombarded with um different headlines and things like that. So this is kind of trying yeah. to represent, represent that uh, feeling of chaos, I guess. Um, I feel like everything's sort of on top of each other, right? So just that element of what you've, right. what you've got there is, is quite nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I love how quickly you just moved it and already it looked quite cool. It's, just, it's quite nice yeah. when you can, you know, move things around, you get it in a place, you know, oh, actually, yeah, that, that looks cool. <laughs> Um, I do think also, like we mentioned, um, you know, quarantine, it's, it's been kind of this 
combination of chaos, but it's also been, you know, very solitary and still and quiet. So I think mm. that's something that we can keep in mind with um, just like the rhythm and pacing of this is trying to emulate that feeling of kind of quiet isolation mixed with um, mm. messy confusion and mm. all that. Trying to make sense of it all. And it's interesting, like, yeah, the comments, I guess, you know, when you mentioned about you working in the evenings, I think yeah, we've got Jason, you can also agree. He's got hours and hours go by and the night is the best. Hashtag kids are in bed. So uh, yeah, I, I guess as well for the parents, uh, parent designers in the chat, or just or just parents in general, if you're kind of working to design, that's probably the best time to you know peace and quiet to, to design. So um, yeah, love yes, that comment. That makes um, sense. Less distractions. Yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, in school, it was always like pulling all nighters was always the thing. Uh, there would just be like a bunch of us in the computer lab finishing a project. <laughs> Know what you mean? I'm not trying to encourage it at all, but I remember finally <laughs> for myself. I um, yeah, I think I didn't see daylight for two days because I had the curtains closed, and I was just oh, back wow. then. I was I was going through a um, I was listening to a lot of uh, podcasts, but it was like um, yeah, was it pod- yeah, it was podcast, but it was like uh, Deep House it's called Deep House Podcast, and it's it's for anyone who knows about this, it's very much uh, it's, it's that kind of music, but yeah. it's very <laughs> repetitive, and I think when my brain's from the design, like repetitive is good. Definitely. So we're talking like three hour, four hour podcasts. So um, again, not trying to plug that as like a good thing to do because good to have breaks, definitely. But that was, yeah, that was definitely my space at, uh, as a second year student trying to make it for my deadlines. Um, maybe, maybe some can relate. Uh, yeah, Hillary Brittany's obviously night owls. Um, it's good to work in the morning as well. Like a fresh start. I, I like to do that. Cop coffee. Yeah, the coffee yeah. is. Yeah. Okay, I've copy and pasted this like three times now. So hopefully... <laughs> Um, this time it works. Okay, great. So I'm just trying to bring in some of that content. So we said, um, how can this feel kind of, how can this, um, feel chaotic in the way that it felt when the pandemic first broke out? Mm. Um, so I have this one entry. Let's see, maybe you just like align it to the bottom here. Um, and it says, so words like pandemic and national emergency are splashed across every screen with images of people in biohazard uniforms and masks. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I'm sure we all remember um, where we were when we first kind of uh, heard the news and mm. I feel like this is a book definitely, you know, for the ages, like we could, you know, fast forward 10 years from now, we look back on this and just, um, I guess it's just that sense of documentation, isn't it? And just, right. you know, having that that element. So this is a really, you know, interesting project to, to work on. Um, yeah, I, I love this. Very really nice. It's also um, like you were talking about screen printing and mm. printing in general. I mean, sometimes, um, we can kind of like fake some of those effects. So maybe if we make this like mm. 95% opacity, we get this like really subtle uh, overlap here, which is kind of nice. You can like um, mm. get just like a little bit more of that legibility. You're speaking my language, Rachel. I love I love the opacity when it's when it's lowered slightly. It's um, yes. cause again, if, if you're working with just, I guess with some clients, if you're just working with just, you know, certain kind of color palettes or, you know, low any opacity, I don't want to say it's like a cheat way, but it's like a nice way of actually having a bit of difference as well, because it just sure. makes the whole design still feel different, but still in that consistency of, of what you're working within. Um, so yeah, I love, I love that element of what you've got there with the opacity, it's really nice. Um, and so the way that I organized all the content, um, so all of this is set in Adobe Garamond regular, and then I have the dates in like a semi-bold italic, so this is how um, the content will be throughout. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, when I have something like this, maybe I could kind of mimic that and have this also be that like semi-bold italic. Um, I think it's also nice to differentiate the date. So for each entry, I put the date, the day of the week, and then where I was um, that day. So. 
March 13th. It's going to happen in New York. Actually, that's literally a day off my birthday. Really? <laughs> yeah, nice. Just put it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so were you, super but yeah. were you, were you um, quarantined for your birthday? We, yeah. Or was it, was it like lot, right it before? A, actually, hang on. What happened? Uh, no, we were in lockdown. No, I think it was just, just after. But it was that awkward, not awkward stage, but I guess it's that I was still a bit reluctant to want to go out and a bit nervous. Right. So we kind of had it really, really quiet. And then, I mean, had obviously birthday not long ago because March not not for long ago as well. Second lockdown birthday, I guess, in a way. So um, I feel like a lot of people obviously had at least one lockdown birthday. You know, hopefully not a second, depending on what part of the year you're in. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think we're just, yeah. I think we're now, now on um, the double pandemic birthdays for those who are, <laughs> it's like that we're in that That's cycle now. We're like lapping ourselves, okay. yeah. That's that's insane. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Urai, uh, sorry, Urai. I hope I'm saying that correct. Um, has got a good point on the music. Uh, all music, all my music playlists are no longer than one half hours long. And when it's when it's up, it forces me to take a break. That's quite a nice way. That's of a good just idea. Being discipline. Mm. I used to set a timer like every because I think you're supposed to get up every. I want to say every like thirty minutes or like it's like way more than most people probably do mm. um but i feel like even after even after a couple hours it's like okay this is this is too <laughs> much too much distraction i'm seeing double I mean, it's not just the opacity yeah. either it's just generally it's just generally my eyes yeah. <laughs> um so yeah i'm just trying to kind of like find that sweet spot of where it overlaps mm. nice. but yeah i'm like kind of Kind of liking the way that's looking. I mean, we could even take mm, it a step nice. further and like make this a little bit more. So maybe for this, we could bring in the idea of so just kind of Frankensteining something together. Sometimes I find uh, with references, it's it helps if you kind of have maybe a few that you're referencing and then you can kind of pull different elements from each because um, mm. we obviously don't want to copy anybody. So maybe we can do something with this idea um, with this. So let's see. Now, I wonder how they did this. I mean, they pro I'm guessing this is some different text boxes but it looks like maybe there's like some weird um text box shapes happening yeah potentially it looks yeah no you or mean you think I think it's all done like um because you got manually. the presents and the you got the presents in the top right hand corner i know my brain was telling me like you yeah. know you have like a text wrap around yes um and then it cuts in potentially oh. that you know they might have maybe strategically placed little blank text boxes with certain text wraps Let's on them. Let's try that. Know. That could be interesting. Okay, um, so now actually, can... That was actually Steve's actually comment, actually. He mentioned that a, a text wrap would be handy there. So um, yeah, that's a little comment about Steve that you could, could try and implement. You know, I haven't actually used a text wrap in a very long time. Text wrap, there it is. Okay, so let's see. When I first discovered what this was, I feel like my mind was a little bit like, wow, okay. No need to press space bar every single time. That's, yeah. not, that's not a thing. You should never do that. Well, do yeah, I mean, that, with, um, I feel like with all these programs, there's so, so many tricks to be learned and mm, mm. so many different ways of doing things. Um, Definitely. Okay, so here we can also, can we wrap? Uh, just on that topic, when you mentioned about the different tricks and, and learning, um, just to encourage you know some of the viewers, you know, with Adobe Live, obviously, even when we're offline and, and we've you know we've gone to sleep and, and off, um, you know, there's so many things you could be watching and then and content you could be you know viewing and, and sort of saving and sort of you know practicing as well. So very much you know encourage you to to have a little play on that and, and to learn some tricks on there as well. Um, and let's you know putting forward as well, our, you know, creative challenges as well. That's always quite a nice one because again, it's testing you and it's it's giving you something to kind of you know work towards so uh, yeah can't stress enough how how you know useful and impactful that would be if you if you get on board of that so uh yeah just a little tip for you there uh, christelle said she's learning so much things being here so that's that's great nice <laughs> doing well 
Yeah, I, like, I mean, I'm sure this is probably something that was done a little bit more manually, but I do think, yeah, like even these little like, like this mm. little A and N here. Um, yeah, like you said, like text around the shape. It's very interesting, very yeah. creative. I think it's really nice. Um, interesting some of the names in there as well actually i was just seeing some of the pe people that i recognize and just yeah michaela cole and yeah so forth. did you watch i may destroy you a hundred percent yeah oh it's awesome. so good <laughs> so good it's very good yeah yeah very oh, very good it's, i thought um, that was like completely brilliant i loved it so much it's quite nice to, like i guess refreshing to hear because obviously it's you know it's uk based and everything right. there is so even the stuff she went and she saw in Shoreditch, I can relate because I've been to those areas. But again, I guess I'm for, sure, yeah, from, yeah, it's it's interesting for me, like you know, over the seas and in the US watching it. Did it feel a little bit like certain areas that you could like? I guess Brooklyn maybe could like be the equivalent of like a shortage. Yeah, the vibes I get. But, yeah, there was. Yeah. I feel like there could be some uh, Brooklyn yeah. vibes in there. Um, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, watch, but definitely. I feel like it's still. Yeah, it's still. It like didn't feel so foreign that it wasn't relatable nice um she's amazing so yeah i don't know this i'm kind that. of liking this mm -hmm. just like kind of weird um mm. you know it's like kind of ugly but i kind of it's kind of interesting too I'm wondering that p you know you've got spring in the p in the title if that uh -huh. i mean it could you know, not work but like the way you've got it kind of overlapping the pa and pandemic if that mm -hmm. was the text wrap in itself so it was it was cutting in I don't so know if that the P, would work. If the P was what we're wrapping around, that's a good idea. So, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Or so like if I like outline the, word the P and then... Exactly, it pushes the word pandemic yes, in and up. Yes, I like it. Okay. Okay, so I need to outline all of these is the problem now. You know what, let's just go back. And so we're going to uh, hopefully sort of wrap up soon as well because I can't believe how quickly a sort of two hours oh, wow. up actually we've um, had a lot of fun with uh, exploring the tights so we've got a little bit of time but just um, yeah just to again just to sort of touch on you know what we've worked so far um, obviously we've got the amazing Rachel art director and graphic designer um, working on some beautiful typography um, and we've been working on uh, a zine typographic zine which has been touching on her notes um, over this past year. So yeah, everything we've seen today has been a mixture, isn't it, of, of, sort of documenting, playing around with fonts and just kind of setting up document, getting a feel for how things could see. Um, we had to look for your inspiration as well. That was quite nice and, and getting a few for, you know, food for thought of how things could be influenced from there. Um, and then tomorrow, do you want to touch on what you want to work on tomorrow, Rachel, for the next session? Yeah, um, I mean, ideally we could maybe get this to a near complete state. Um, so what I'll probably do is take some time tonight to kind of reevaluate um, some of what we've established today and kind of lay that out in a slightly more organized manner so that tomorrow we can just um, kind of do what we've been doing with this spread, like, you know, um, kind of lay out what, what content goes on each spread and then we can come back and just like play around with it and look at reference, um, maybe have people send in um, recommendations. So mm. I feel like yeah, you like a vote of like which page you like, right? As well, like a little vote of like, ah, that one looks good or, or so yeah. and um, open it to a poll, who knows? I think, um, yeah. And like you were saying, the yeah. beauty of experimenting is like we could just do this for so long. Like it's just, Oh Moving yeah, completely. And just playing, and it's um, honestly a it's actually a luxury to be able to have um, time to just kind of play around like this. Uh, you know, it's it's not yeah. something that um, you always get. I really so like that, by the way, what you just did there. When it just popped, I was like, oh, okay, it's creeping. Yeah, through. yeah, I could see something working quite, quite well. With like that. I kind of like how um, it's you know it's it's wrapping around this, it's wrapping around the S and the P, but it's also still mm. like going into the R. Mm. Um, which I kind of like. I feel like for the spread, we're just gonna embrace this kind of awkward, tense, um, <laughs> tense feeling. So, mm. yeah, oh, I think it's amazing. kind of. I think it's kind of working. I'm liking where this is going. Um, I want this as like then, a poster. Definitely, it'd be quite cool as a poster. <laughs> 
And then um, just to kind of, I don't know, reference our like Fibonacci scale. Um, I'm also thinking about bringing this down in size. So um, right now this type mm -hmm. is 26. And I have, it, I, I have um, character paragraph styles set for the body copy that we'll lay in, which is all the really tiny copy. Um, and then I think once we kind of establish more of a, a rhythm with some of the other type that we're using throughout, then I can establish mm. those systems as well. But right now I'm really just kind of um, mm. even using the scale tool, which is probably frowned upon. Um, but I, I often <laughs> find it's easy to just, you know, scale things and then you kind of go back in and it's like, okay, it's mm. 10.26. So I'll just like make it 10, 10 by 12. Um, Sound like blasphemy there when you said that. It's just how, how dare you speak about the, uh, the scale tool? No, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's different preferences. Ta type sizes and random obscure long decimals. It's like makes <laughs> you know, it's kind of cringy, but um... definitely. I get yeah. And also as well, we've got our, our sort of wonderful media as well, sort of saying uh, we can maybe potentially do tomorrow if you know if you've got the time is to do a little poll as well. So you know we've got a few different variations of um, maybe of the spring spread or any other spreads, and we've got a tie would be quite cool yeah. to. Put that out there to, to, the, to the chat and who knows we could um kind of come up with a nice little conclusion together that'd be that'd be great I'm trying to i feel like i want i want like one more kind of interruption in here um mm. you know it could be actually cool is if we brought in another entry that kind of talks about what we're talking about here um and then kind of like squeeze it in so let's see if we go back to our content. So the bottom is where I pulled out. By the way, it's really cool to sort of see how like everything you've collated as well. Just, I kind of want to read each single. I know obviously we can't because <laughs> time as well, but I'm so right. curious to know like what you've been through in the years. It's, it's, um, um, you've all been through some crazy stuff, so it's, it's cool. Right. Some, some of it is like, some of it is like very stupid. Um, like one of them is this day. And I still remember this. I accidentally took a sip of dirty flower water. Like I had, <laughs> I had like taken the flowers out to throw away, but I hadn't put the vase away yet. And I thought it was my water glass. So I took like a big swig of just, and it wasn't like, oh, fresh. Wow. it wasn't fresh flower water. Okay. It was like the flowers had been in there for a week. So it was kind of okay. like murky. Um, Did it have like an extra taste into the, the flavor? <laughs> I was just like, so I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think I. I yeah. Um, you don't go your way. Nothing, though, nothing bad to... happened. I'm alive, but um, yeah, it was good, uh, good, good. <laughs> it was a bit alarming. Um, I mean, if most of your stats are like on that level of like drinking dirty water, like flour, dirt, like I feel like the whole thing is gonna be amazing because it's just like, uh, what does Rachel get up to? In that oh time? gosh, really yeah. Know? Um, it's, and yeah, it's, it's interesting too, just reading back through and mm. seeing, you know, the similarities or what, you know, like, uh, one thing that I just read here, um, there was a lot of time spent on like the fire escape and the roof last year. I remember there was this one point in New York when you weren't, you weren't supposed to leave your home. So all of a sudden, like everyone was on the roof. If you went to the rooftop, you could just like <laughs> look in the distance and it's like, and every Amazing. yeah, all kind all kinds of people on the roof. I remember there were yeah. um, all kinds of like TikTok videos of people doing random things on their roof, like oh. working out, playing <laughs> instruments, doing yoga. Um, but that's quite nice because you mentioned like even where we live as well, like um, where we obviously we just moved. But you know, in East London, it felt more like community and spirit as well because we're all in yes. it together. Do you know what I mean? Like it's an element yes. of all at home, and you know, even just being just sitting at the front of your doorstep. And just looking at other people who you maybe necessarily have seen because you go to work every morning, you don't really exactly. Out, it's a nice, um, you know, there yeah. is some positives I think that's come out of this whole experience for sure. I completely um, agree, and I think, I mean, for me too, I live in an area that has a lot of like bars and restaurants, and so obviously it's it's typically a very like full, lively area. And yeah. when all of that was stripped away, and all of those bars, restaurants, shops, literally mm. boarded up, closed. Um, yeah, it was a very, a very different experience. It was a bit mm. alarming at first, but then I feel like you also get this much more like intimate relationship with your neighborhood. Like you kind of, Definitely. like you were saying, you know, you notice, notice different things. You notice the people that are there now that everyone else is gone. It's like, oh, they must actually mm. live in this area. 
it makes you think i hope after when this is a bit of a distant memory we will still have that mindset of just being nice to one another and actually yeah. just you know we can still talk you know it's 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 yeah it's it's all you know it's brought us a lot close together and even for families as well right it's it's an opportunity Absolutely. So, um, so yeah this is such this feels like such a relevant project that you're working on and um it's exciting to sort of see what we do tomorrow as well as, as the back of this as well um very excited i can see some people who i've mentioned you know there cheryl was mentioning she can't wait for the next part of it for tomorrow that's quite exciting so um yeah hopefully uh you guys can obviously tune in and, and sort of see what we're gonna work on for tomorrow um and also just to mention i was gonna say for just for tomorrow as well we'll be back tomorrow at 12 p.m pacific time uh right after jessica kabosi's uh photo editing stream um and if you want to learn about how to retouch photographs um, in photoshop um yeah definitely join um her tomorrow at 9 30 a.m pacific time um so it's gonna be a good, definitely be a good one so uh yeah tune in for that um so just like another random entry that i found uh scars is closing so scars was kind of it's a pizza place right by me and it's kind of my sanctuary it's like where i eat dinner at least two times a week and i Scars. remember there was a point during the pandemic when they closed it was just like oh shit and you, they, <laughs> like, didn't deli- they didn't deliveries or is it no they just like completely just like shut oh. down um they're back right. now but it was okay. um it was a dark it was, time it was frightening it was very dark <laughs> oh scars I, that's a strong i mean yeah like if you're ever in new york I'm biased, obviously, but I think it's the best pizza. It's very, very okay. good. To be fair, I mean, I know I've been to New York before. I've been to Florida, but to New York, I, that's the one thing I'd probably try first pizza. I just feel oh, like I need to. Oh, you have to. Try any, yeah. <laughs> Go to pizza, yeah. Um, okay, here's another one. Um, NYC was officially deemed the epicenter of the corona crisis, and the number of cases doubles every day. Prince, Prince Charles tested positive. I also love, there was like kind of oh, wow. that... Uh, that's that period of time at the beginning when like different celebrities would get in and be like oh like tom hanks has it you know or like prince charles <laughs> it's like celebrities can get it too it's just <laughs> like i just i just thought it's still like, yeah no i know what you mean <laughs> yeah like that, that was, was a, like a, that was like a headline that was uh mm. no one was safe I think Mer- Mercurial's got a, a, a point straight away i mean i i might end up being rolled down the tarmac but she mentioned first pizza then donuts um Ooh. so yeah i mean kind of your sweet somewhere. and your salty it's a it's a balance definitely, definitely. so i might have to a little bit of a workout before i even get there and work back out when i come back just to make sure i can fit <laughs> on to yeah, certain things but um but yeah <laughs> thanks for the heads up guys on on that front um and like we said obviously hopefully you guys can you know to join in tomorrow and, and get a real feel for um you know how this project's gonna come about because already looking it's looking brilliant with the spring spread and obviously we've got a few more to to work on too so um yeah thank yes. you very much rachel this is awesome so are we i guess we're winding down for the day huh we're winding down yeah it's, it's um yeah i mean two hours have gone really quick but hopefully you know everyone in the chat's had a chance to you know have a look into your world um and also just get a feel for you know how design works from editorial perspective as well um typographically too um the questions have been great so again thank you guys for for joining in um and like i said before obviously you know definitely you know, once we're off the line, you know, keep, you know, browsing on Adobe Live on Behance because there's a lot of content that you can sort of follow up on there. Um, and yeah, uh, Rachel, just want to mention again, just one last time for maybe those who just join in, you know, what we can expect for tomorrow as well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we can, today we've kind of had this um, really experimental process of starting to get our content into place and playing with the typefaces that we've selected um, using only black and white. So tomorrow what we're going to do is um, have a little bit more of an organized approach. I'll get all the content in there tonight and then tomorrow we can really just play with um, the layouts and what makes sense for for that uh that entry of the day so i don't think i asked what size is it is it an a5 print or um it's four by the... six inches okay so okay. um like this is the one from last time so it's about nice. it's about the size of a postcard okay awesome so yeah guys hopefully you have tune in tune in for uh, that tomorrow um like we said obviously same time tomorrow um so yeah please obviously definitely join us for that um it's gonna be a good one hopefully so we look forward to it and thank yes. you rachel and you know for joining us today it's been an absolute pleasure thank uh, you kieran it's yeah. been it's been lovely and thank you again obviously to our lovely uh mediators as well making sure the chat is all 
nice and clean and funneling well. And obviously, you know, thank you to you guys as well at home for joining in. So I uh, look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. See you tomorrow. All right. See you later, guys.